Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Lenovo Legion Y44W-10. This is an expensive gaming monitor, but a fantastic one, an ultra-wide curved gaming monitor that sports a resolution of 3840 by 1200 has AMD FreeSync 2, 144Hz refresh rate, it's capable of HDR display as well, which is pretty cool for HDR compatible games and it has a number of other features that make it interesting. Now this is an unboxing and overview video to talk about what's in the box and discuss what I think of this monitor. I've been using it for a couple of weeks and if you stick with me you'll see footage of it in action as well as the setup process. One of my favourite features is this nifty little speaker that comes in the box and attaches to the base. It's an optional attachment, you don't need to install it if you don't want to, but it's actually quite nice. It's a Harman Kardon certified RGB backlit speaker that's actually surprisingly capable and delivers some pretty decent sound and that's quite nice because the Asus ultra wide monitor I've been using for quite a while hasn't got very good speakers on it and doesn't deliver very good sound and that's always been quite a frustration for me but unfortunately this Lenovo Legion has to go back but if you're looking for a monitor that delivers awesome sound then this is probably it. As you can see from the box, this is a review sample that's been sent to me after being used by other people, which is why it's so tatty. Hopefully yours won't turn up this way. Inside the box, you get the chunky power cable. You also get numerous other cables that include HDMI, DisplayPort, USB, and USB-C cables, and you'll see why you need those a bit later on. You'll also see this rather substantial and robust looking base. And I'm pleased to report that the setup and installation process of this monitor is remarkably easy and quite joyful, at least putting the stand on anyway, and as you'll see the setup process for that. And now I'm using a Samsung 49 inch ultra wide at the moment, which is much more tricky to install because you actually have to screw screws into the back of it, whereas this one just basically clips on and you'll see that in action. Now as I said, there's a USB-C to USB-C cable, uh, HDMI cable, DisplayPort cable, and a USB to USB cable as well and that reason for that is there's pass through and you obviously need power for the speaker too so there's a lot of different cables to plug in that's perhaps one downside especially if you're using that speaker obviously if you're not bothered about pass through to the extra plugs that you'll see then you don't need to plug in everything and you can reduce the number of cables on your desk now this is the rear mount, actually a very cool hefty thing that's pretty easy to install as you'll see a bit later on. It basically clips onto the rear of the Martiv through some hooks, which is really nice. And you also get a mini quick setup guide, which uh, is worth eyeing up to work out what you're going to do, whether you're going to install the speaker and what cables you need to plug in in order to get it to work. As I said, it's a relatively easy setup process, but it's worth buying these things up. Now, getting the screen itself out of the box is obviously a precarious situation, but it's not too hefty. It does have a good build quality, so it does feel substantial. You're not getting a cheap screen by any means, and it's worth taking care. But the one thing that I was struck by almost immediately that you'll see in a second is just how curved it is, or at least how curved it looks when you put it on the desk. Now, with an ultra-wide monitor, you do need a bit of curve on it, obviously, because if you've got a massive one, then it's hard for your eyes to reach the corners when it's flat, and the curve just makes it a much more pleasant gaming experience. But as you see when I put it on my desk, you'll note the curvature to it is quite significant. You don't really notice that once it's installed and you're using it, though, and that is obviously a bonus, but it was quite, I was quite struck by just how curved it is. It's also worth noting just how massive it is. 43 inches is quite a big monitor. I've got a very long desk and it still takes up quite a big portion of it. You can see a view of the monitor here. You can see the power cable input and the various other inputs, which I'll show you again in a second. But also just how curved it is in the center. Curved enough that you can fit your fist underneath it. Quite a significant curve there, but as I said, it's not something you notice once you start playing, which is obviously a bonus. And it actually does deliver a really good experience. Now here you can see the installation process of fitting the backstand, and it basically just clips in at the top, 
and then locks in at the bottom and it's pretty easy to do as usual i'm making a hash of it because i always make a hash of everything but it is remarkably easy to just clip that into place and then it's fairly sturdy and there's not too much wiggle to it which is always a bonus now the next bit is you can just screw the base onto that and set it up on your desk and that just pops on and then screws in with this little screw and that's really easy to do with your hand you don't need a load of extra tools or anything and you can see a really nice design to it it's quite chunky it will take up quite a bit of room on the desk so it's worth bearing that in mind and this setup is obviously without the speaker installed so if you don't want to use the speaker that's how easy it is to set up you just put them down and then you just need to plug the cables in you're away you can see the amount of room that base takes up on the desk so you're going to need quite a deep desk and here you can see the Harman Kardon certified speaker you'll note it has a microphone capabilities and the volume adjustment and the RGB backlighting as well so numerous things that you can do with it and it has a USB-C connection and I'll show you that setup in a minute but it requires USB-C to two USB connections which then go into the back of the monitor and then from there into your PC and that kind of keeps things a bit tidy but the installation of this is really easy so instead of just putting the base straight on you slip it over the base then put the base on below that and again it's just a simple process of screwing that in place And here you can see the little cable. It's a small cable, so that makes you keep things a bit tidier. But basically, plug in the USB-C end of it into the speaker, and then the other two go into the spare ports or the correct ports on the back of the monitor that allow the speaker to get its power and the audio. It does turn on when the monitor's on, and you can see the RGB lighting on it, and that just basically changes color of its own accord. And it's not too obnoxious, not too bright. You'll also not note here the drop down pass through so you can plug your headphones straight in and USB peripherals. And that's why you have so many USB ports on the rear of the monitor to plug into your PC. You can get the power and the sound for the speaker as well as pass through on the front if you so want to use it. Here you can see a close up look at the underside at the rear. You see two HDMI inputs, USB-C, display port, another USB-C, and the two USB-A connections. Now the USB-C connection goes to your PC, and the USB-A is where you plug in the speaker. And obviously having the option of display port and HDMI means you can plug in several different things to this. The rear of the monitor also has a very nice Lenovo Legion finish to it. With this cool venting. And it really is a very nice monitor. One frustration for me, and I'm not sure if this is a problem generally or if I had a slightly defective one, is this. Obviously it's meant to pop away and then pop out when you want it, but I couldn't get it to stay up. It just would not stay. Could have been user error or maybe I've got a slightly defective one. Uh, as you can see, the screen itself is very nice. Found it very saturated to start with. There are a number of settings that you can play around with and change. But otherwise, this is a very, very nice screen. And it's very nice to have all that extra space as well. I'll leave all the... the specifications of the screen in the description below so you can see as well as a link to the main page so you can get more info on it but here you can see it fully set up plugged into my machine from windows and it's hard to do justice just how much glorious space you get but i found you could have basically three windows side by side now here you can see the easy access menu on the front it's actually nice to have all these menus you'll note there's a game menu a menu to switch between the different things uh, display port or HDMI and you can see here there are mode switching so there's already profiles set up for FPS, racing, RTS and game and you can tweak those as well 
you can adjust the brightness contrast and uh, the overdrive on it make sure you're getting the best refresh rate there you'll note there's an HDR option too obviously you need to change the HDR in Windows settings and to make sure you have games that support HDR in the first place you'll see a bit later on as I'm playing Red Dead Redemption 2 which does have it and it does look really nice and really vivid once you've got the settings set up correctly because you also have to set it up in the game so it's a lot of faff to get HDR working properly and initially it looked quite washed out but it did far much you play with the settings and that is perhaps one of my gripes with this monitor is it feels like there's a lot of faff with the menus to get things looking correct now obviously you need to make sure you do that properly and get it the way you want it and you can probably find guides online to get the best experience I also found I had an issue with text on a white background in Windows where when you're scrolling and it's a bit hard probably to put across in video but sometimes you'd see this slight green hue when scrolling through text and again that could be just a setting that we could change to sort things out uh, this is with the low light turned off though and low light obviously filters out the blue which actually makes it easier on the eye so using it during the day or turning the low light settings on to reduce that blue light and making it easier on the eye and then turning it to maximum beautifulness during the day played a number of games to test this monitor out and be able to compare it with other monitors I've been using and one of those is Call of Duty Modern Warfare which looks pretty spiffing on ultra settings and looks really good on this monitor you get loads of extra space as you can see you get so much space the scope doesn't display properly now, the problem with ultra wide monitors if you've not used them that you might see a bit later on is when you go to cutscenes the developers never take into account ultra wide so you end up with this little black box surrounding it which kind of ruins the experience but for gaming itself it looks fantastic because you get a lot of extra peripheral vision a lot wider view of the world and it really looks great and it performed really well in this obviously having a large screen with a pretty high pixel resolution means you do need a powerful machine to play games and get a decent FPS although experienced an even bigger problem with that with the Samsung monitor that I'm using at the moment which is 5000 pixels across a lot larger pixel space but this one did really well and had a smooth experience and the obviously 144 hertz refresh rate means a nice smooth gaming experience too and generally speaking it was really good the only problem I had as I said is using HDR I found it was a bit washed out if you didn't play around with the settings properly and there's a bit of a faff but on default on other games like Call of Duty and Cuisine Royale and uh, Rainbow Six Siege it looked really good too Obviously you have the option to play with the speaker on as well, which is an added bonus, and that also does a very good job with the sound, although I do generally prefer wearing a surround sound headset, mostly because the kids won't wake them up. And here you can see Red Dead Redemption, and the settings for the HDR, turning that on, making sure you get the best possible experience, and it is glorious the amount of space you get, how much of the world you can see, uh, all that extra room. A uh, 43 inch ultra wide gives you a lot of extra room to look around and just absorb the environment and depending on how close you're sitting to it obviously makes a big difference to what you're seeing and your overall experience. Generally speaking I felt like I've really enjoyed using this monitor. The blue light filter is excellent for ensuring you don't get really tired eyes or any sort of headaches during the day when working on it and then playing at night it just really really immersive experience and smooth too not noticed any problems with the frame rate drops or any issues at all and it delivers a fantastic gaming experience the only niggle i say is trying to get those settings on the display correct you might be able to find some guides online to the best settings for it i found playing with the various ones that were already on there i had to keep tweaking it to get it the way i wanted it and get it the way looking perfect especially for Red Dead but generally it's a really good monitor and probably worth the investment especially if you've not used ultra wide monitors in the past and if nothing else it's an awesome monitor to show off to your friends and they just have to find a really good background for your wallpaper 
This has been the Provoke Pro, and I'm going to leave you to watch a little time lapse of me pewing. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Be sure to check out the description to find all the specs and the links to purchase or to find out more about this monitor. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, or hilarious. Be sure to subscribe and check out these other videos, as well as taking a look in the description for links and information you might find useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything you'd like to see extra about this. And have a great life.